guitars and ukuleles. Um, this video is going to be on how to cut back um, cured nitro so it will be ready for buffing. Um, the things the things I use are well let's just show you the this is off the gun um, it's not orange peel it's kind of but it's not flat either it's sort of like tiny orange peel or something it's just you know the finish off the gun um, what I have here is uh, a foam block. It's kind of not super hard. This one's another foam block. It's even softer than that one. Uh, this was an old flip-flop, or thong as we call them in Australia. Uh, this is for the waist. Just a curved sanding call thing. Uh, this is the main one I use. It's just a bit of plywood with um, some cork glued to it, and that's I like that size because uh, when you you halve, then halve, then halve again, a piece of sandpaper makes it perfect for this. So I've got. all these sandpapers. So off the gun I go 600, then 800, then 1000, 1500, then 2000. And I have each one of these, each different grit in a different little container and filled with water. Preferably the night before, but um, I put these in about an hour ago, and they're they're pretty nice. Um, and then after the two thousand, uh, for the back and top, I use a three M product called Trizac, and that's the used one. don't have a clear you can kind of see the markings so that's 3000 and then I also use 5000 is a new 5000 and these are quite thin they're about one eighth thick um, and they leave an excellent finish. And I use these uh, these two 3,000 to 5,000 on a random orbital sander, which I've got another video on. But I probably won't be showing you that because I've got plenty of other stuff to show. You. Tricks. Um, I also have just get some. Uh, this is Viva paper towel. It's really, it's quite soft and smooth. It's good for finishing, and I always lay some down when I'm doing this job. So these are the tricks that I use. Oh, you also need a spritz bottle of water. And it's preferable to have some liquid soap, just a little bit, and uh, that just lubricates everything. It stops the sandpaper uh, getting those hard deposits. So this is the size when you half, then half, then half again, a normal size bit of sandpaper. and and it's basically got two sides. 
So that's how I like to work. So just rub that um, soap around a bit. Um, so this is my number one tip, most important tip, and a really good one, I think. And uh, and I haven't heard anyone else use this, so um, I claim to be the inventor. <laughs> um, so with each grit, oh, by the way, an important thing, each different grit, I use the, uh, there's, there's different ways of, uh, of labeling sandpaper. There's P600, and then there's, if it just said 600 with no P, that would be a different grading system. And the 600 P doesn't mean the same thing as 600. They're different grits. So you have to stick to one uh, grading system. Uh, <coughs> and then there's, um, there's like four different grading systems. Um, this is the European one. Um, and I, I prefer it. I don't know what the P stands for. Probably pain in the ass because why the world can't just do one? It's crazy. Um, so, with each different grid, I'm going to sand in a different direction. So, with the 600, I'm going to start off sanding diagonal to the grain. And the first grit 600 always takes the longest because you're you're getting rid of all the orange peel and after about that long I check just to see if I've got any uh, hard deposits on here build up I'll just stick with this low about just so we can I can show you what I'm talking about so with a uh, paper towel with each new grit I chuck this away and get a new one so I've still got some shine here. You just want to dull the entire surface. Um, you can might be able to pick up uh, the edges always have a bit of a, a raised um, bit of lacquer on them. Just something about the vortexes that are created in the air when you're spraying. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to pick that up. Yeah, so you can see there's a little bit of shine right on the edge, but it's uh, good here. So this has, this is flat, so I'll demonstrate on here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick up these grain lines, I mean these sanding marks, but I can see, can you see the, <laughs> I'm asking you like you can answer back, the sanding direction was this way. So, I'll move on to 800, prematurely, but, you know, instruction video, and you'll notice P800, and all of those are P, whatever the grid is. Okay, so I'm just going to do, with the grain here. See those? I didn't use any soap, and now I've got these hard deposits. Kind of like plaque or something. 
and you have to get rid of them. Otherwise they scratch the uh, what you're sanding, which is very frustrating. Also doing that dulls the sandpaper. And when I do that I get the spritz bottle and just off off the job I uh, spritz it before I put it back into the tub. Okay, so I'm just going to do a third. Actually, no, I'll show you what I've got so far. Hopefully, be able to see it. Okay, so about here is the uh, perimeter of the 800 grit, so it's about here. Can you see the side scratches here? The sanding marks that go in a different direction. They change direction right here. So by going by sanding and they then they start here again or this way. So by sanding in a different direction for each grit, what I've found is it's really, really easy in person. It's a bit hard to pick up on uh, on video, but it's really easy to see in person if you've removed all the previous grits, grits, uh, scratches, all the scratches from the previous grit. So I can see just in the space that I did for the 800 grit just then, just here, I can see that all of that is 600 scratch marks free. Just down here, where I wasn't really worried about things coming off. Um, you can see some scratch marks enter. And what I'll do, I'll just get so I'm going back to 600 and then I'll put a couple of scratch marks right down the center. So that should be really easy to see. And then it's a nice 800 that way and that way. So if you tried to, so that's 600, 800 with 600 there. If I go up to a thousand now and try and, uh, so I've gone this way, then I've gone this way, now I'm going to go this way. Again, got those deposits from the soap. Okay, let's see what we have. So I can see I can see the scratch marks here. There's a lot going this way from the thousand, but within the thousand, or in the middle of the thousand, I can also see the 600, which hasn't been removed yet, not surprisingly. So that just demonstrates how easy it is to see um, if you've not removed the previous grits, scratch marks. And so I do 
all of 600, like all in one direction. It doesn't matter which direction you start in. You can start straight up and down if you want. Um, and then move it over. You can even go from diagonal to the opposite diagonal and then and then like the diagonal again or something whatever just just a different direction to uh, to show up and just make really obvious and apparent uh, which scrap mar scratch marks you are looking at when you uh, are going through the grids and sometimes I you just miss a couple of scratch marks and you go to the buffer and you you buff it up and then you look at a scratch mark and it's in a certain direction and by that direction you can say that's a thousand grit scratch mark because of the you know that's the only one that you did in that direction um, so that would be my best tip for sanding back um, so I do that mostly on the back and top um, the sides are you know you can use this method it's a bit trickier just because the sides are always annoying to sand but um, and it's less obvious on a spruce top or you know maple back or something um, you know, rosewood makes uh, everything obvious. Um, so that is something which I wish I learned like 20 years ago. Uh, it really, really helps uh, identify which scratch marks you're looking at when you're uh, looking at your job and see an imperfection. Um, The only other thing, I guess, is obvious, and I kind of said it already. Um, you just want to remove all the shine. And I'm not sure if this is picking up. You see, this this is mostly sanded, but there's still shine. Just the the low points of the uh, of the orange peel, and the edge is always uh, shiny not always shiny but it's um, because of that vortex thing with the spray gun comes up um, another thing that I've done and it won't I won't be able to show you this but when I'm doing my final sanding I put a bit more pressure right on the perimeter and you know I'm sanding like with 220 or something um, and you know just give it a five seconds sanding just around the perimeter just you know in one area so five seconds here and then continue that around so what that does obviously is lower the last kind of quarter of an inch or something um, that I found really helps with sand throughs right on the edge because right on the edge sand throughs are really common um, or common for me and everyone else I've known when they were starting out and <laughs> even now um, but t just dropping that down uh, it means it's going to be like technically there's going to be a little bit more finish on the edge because when you're sanding this flat um, like the side or this area comes down here and so there's a bit more finish here but it's like you know one or two thou more but I've just found that that really helps uh, so I hope that was of help to you um, I really encourage this different direction sanding I don't really do um, you know swirly sanding um, I've I don't know I find that more strenuous and uh, but but if you do that um, that could be one of the directions because you know 
that is a, a pattern that you will be able to recognize if everything else is straight. Um, so that's about all I think I need to say. Um, these side sanding calls are good just for doing this and you know finish doesn't have a grain direction so it doesn't matter if you're doing this or whatever so yeah make one of those up um, but to always use a you know a hard block for sanding not don't use like just raw plywood back it with something um, and starting with cutting it back flat with 600 and then moving up through the different grits um, I found is really beneficial and I, I go through more grits of sandpaper than other people so some people stop at 1200 then go to the buffing wheel I, I go to 2000 and then 3000 and 5000 on Trizac um, I find I mean it's obvious the less time you spend working the finish on the buffer the less catastrophic accidents can happen such as you know the buffer can grab an edge and flick it away then the whole thing's screwed um, you can also buff through if you just sort of lose concentration a bit uh, you can buff through the finish uh, and it also is a, an abrasive that's working pretty hard depending on how much pressure you're putting on it but I just find that I feel more, way more comfortable just going through a couple more grits of sandpaper. The 600, the first one is always the hardest and then each consecutive one basically gets easier and you spend less time doing it and it's less stressful um, because going from you know 1500 removing those scratch marks with 2000 grit uh, is really easy you know you just sort of and it's done. So yeah, don't be scared of hand sanding. Um, it's less uh, dangerous, I guess, than the buffing wheel. Um, and also, just the time you spend hand sanding. Just, uh, I recommend, I definitely recommend just buying these cheap things from, from you know, the supermarket. Um, one for each grit. Uh, wipe down each new grit with um, a different piece of paper, a, you know, towel, whatever it's called, um, and just check your work regularly. So don't just sit there for, you know, a full eight minutes without wiping the water away and looking at what's going on. Um, you don't you know, once it's done, you don't have to go any further. It's done. Um, so you saw how quickly that 800 removed those 600 grit uh, scratch marks. So just keep that in mind. Um, you obviously want to do the least amount of sanding as possible, um, especially when you're going through so many grits. So that is it. I hope that was of uh, interest and of help for some people. I know as soon as when I sort of came up with this different direction system it really helped me um, especially help getting like figuring out rogue scratches on the buffing wheel or just looking at it um, so thank you if you enjoy such videos please subscribe to my channel this channel thank you peace bye